Hey there, welcome to another studio vlog. So I'm starting out right now unboxing some things I got in the mail, which is a new shelf for my mini prints. And they're a lot more collapsible. I'm sure you've seen these everywhere in artist alleys. So that's exciting. And also I got a brand new portfolio book that I can add more pages in for when I make new prints, which is really helpful because obviously with most portfolio books, they have a set amount of pages you can have in there, so being able to add a bunch is super, super nice. So in these clips, I'm just adding all of my prints into the book and deciding a good order for viewing pleasure, I suppose. Typically, what I'll try to do is put my more popular or well-known prints towards the front and the lesser known or less purchased ones towards the back. And I'm also making different sections in the book, so there will be a little discount section for prints that I'm I've been trying to get rid of and mini prints I'm trying to get rid of as well. Okay, so it is the next day currently. Um, my prints just got completed and I'm gonna go pick those up after I finish eating this peanut butter and jelly I'm about to make. Um, and then, what else? The gift wrapping paper I ordered is going to be here later tonight sometime. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go and pick up those prints and then cut them and put them where they're supposed to go. Um, and then I'm not sure how much else I have to do really, but obviously I will update when the time is needed, so yeah. So right here I'm at my school doing a scan of a gouache painting I did of a bowl of ramen. I'll put it on screen right here if you're interested. Um, I've been kind of on a little like gouache painting like grind I guess. I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's like a medium I really really enjoy using. If you're interested, I use Holbein acrylic gouache. It's really, really fun to work with as a person who has a lot of experience in acrylic paint, but also wanting something a lot more freeform like watercolor. All right, so sorry if the AC is really loud. I just picked up my prints and it's always so nerve wracking when I'm printing a brand new, or like printing an illustration that hasn't been printed before. And I'm always worried it's not gonna come out right. So moment of truth. <clears throat> Here's Tifa. Here, let's get better lighting. Colors turned out really good with her. Very accurate, I say. Um, now we gotta find the one. Yeah, okay. This one I'm a bit worried about because it has darker values. Ooh! I think that turned out really good. Um, and then I also had some more signage that I printed out and then I'm gonna add to the portfolio book really quick. So I'm gonna cut these put all of them down really, um, and you'll see me do that, so.
Okay, so right here I'm making a little tab that viewers can flip to that just brings you kind of directly right to the discounted items. I figured it could entice people to look all the way through the end of the book in case if they're interested in cheaper items. Honestly, cutting prints is probably one of the more tedious things I have to do. It's super tedious having to make sure everything is always lined up correctly. My paper cutter is always a little bit off, so I have to slightly tilt my prints so I can cut them right along the border, but more often than not, I have to cut the prints a couple of times so that they're, they're correct and don't show any white border any longer. And then after this, I'm just taking all of my discounted prints or prints that I'm trying to get rid of and just putting them towards the back of the book as well. Oh my god. I have not checked back in in so long. It's been like probably like four days. Um, but I've had three orders from my Etsy shop the past two days and I've never been so... Ah! Literally, it brings me like so much joy. I, I can't like, it like, I can't even put it into words. Um, so somebody got, uh, uh, Mini Kiryu Majima yesterday, and then a Ganon button. Um, so I already dropped those off at the post office, and then today, somebody got a Rayquaza print, and that's what that is right there. Um, that's the big rigid mailer. So my table runner on my Artist Alley display, I'll put a picture here. I kind of just now realized it doesn't have blue art on it, so I'm gonna add that sometime during this vlog. Um, and you can see how, like, I worked on my table runner, I guess. I didn't, um, source my table runner and get it printed through, like, a company at all, I just, um, made it myself. So, let me go grab that and then I can talk about how I did that more in depth for you guys. Okay, so... This is my table runner. It's so wrinkly. <laughs> I don't... I just... There's no point in ironing it. I don't own an iron. Who, who owns a fucking iron, bruh? I'm in college. This is my table runner. It's literally just this at the very end. Um, and then obviously the rest of this goes over the table, kind of like this if I were to do a demonstration. But, I don't know if you can tell, but this is all fabric painted. You can see the texture a lot more. Um, but yeah, I just went to Joann's um, and I just got fabric in the shade of kind of like the blue color I use in all my branding or something akin to that. I kind of use just somewhat the same shade of blue. Um, but I vaguely took some measurements of like how long it would be and like what would fit on a table pretty well. And then I just sewed it because I have some experience in sewing 
It's not super pretty on the ends here, but it's like, nobody's gonna see that at all. And it, it looks fine-ish um, on the, the pretty side. So, and it, it's, it's held up. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, and I just, I, I sewed it. It was really easy. Um, I was gonna say I have experience in, I used to cosplay a lot. Um, and that's the main reason how I learned to sew, fun fact. Um, I don't really do that anymore, but I do have a Michio cosplay. I'll put that right here. Um, that's like the only cosplay I'll ever wear to cons anymore. Um, so if you're ever at a Midwest convention, and if I'm not vending there, um, probably ASEN. I really enjoy going to ASEN. Um, I'll probably be in a Michio outfit. If not, I'll be out of cosplay, but you won't know what I'll look like. So anyway, I'm getting so sidetracked. So what the plan is, um, is to actually put blue art right here because I don't know what I was thinking, but like, obviously it does not have that. Um, and people can't search like blue and then nothing will pop up, obviously. Um, I was thinking about putting some like social media symbols or like my website but I just don't want since all my socials obviously there's no nobody else with the handle of mine um that it's pretty easy to just search up blue art and then like everything will come up my website my instagram my twitter my whatever so I'm not super concerned about that and I also just don't really want to draw like any more attention to my table runner than needed because right now with my table display it i use a black tablecloth and against this bright blue it draws a lot of contrast and it's almost a little too eye-catching when i obviously want it to be focused on my work instead and i even posted about this in the artist alley international discord um about just some advice and i think i'm gonna get uh dark blue uh, tablecloth or like bed sheet <laughs> so I don't have to pay tablecloth uh, prices but yeah I'll just get a like a dark blue bed sheet so it's less like contrasty because obviously this light blue against the black right here it's quite the contrast and it kind of draws your eyes to the table runner rather than my art that would be on display so I've been wanting to find like kind of the right blue color I was thinking of like a royal blue, kind of like the color of the Sonic. Um, and I think like that would look pretty good. But I almost wonder if I should go darker than this too. But then again, if I go too dark, I'll still have the same problem of kind of the contrasting too much. So I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, I'm gonna get my like actual written out blue art in my font um, up on my computer and then I'll put it, I'll transfer it onto here and then we'll paint it. So yeah, looking forward to it. So this is the same exact process I did to transfer my logo onto my table runner. Essentially, I just trace whatever I'm wanting to use and then I stencil it out. And then I have block printing ink, which a lot of printmaker artists will use. Uh, for t-shirts or whatever of the type. So this is completely waterproof and can go in the wash if I need to do that. The technique I use is obviously this would work so much better if I didn't use lined notebook paper. Cardstock would probably be a much better option, but I don't have a printer and I didn't feel like spending 20 cents when I could just use lined notebook paper and trace it on my monitor. So my process for doing this is once I'm done tracing, I will take the paper, obviously tape it down onto the fabric and put the little like masks, I guess you could say for like in the middle of the O, the A, the B, whatever. And then I'll tape those down as securely as I can. I just use masking tape. And then I'll take a paintbrush, take the white ink, and then I paint inwards trying my best not to go underneath the paper that's taped down because if that happens then your lines will get really messy underneath because the fibers of the paintbrush and the ink will obviously 
have more of a chance of getting underneath what you've masked off. I'm sure there's probably an easier, much better way to do this, but this is just the way I go about doing it. I've done it for a while, I'm pretty used to it. Um, it can come out pretty messy, like I'm sure you'll see this, oh, she's a hot mess, but I just go back and fix it and make it look better looking, and then most of the time it comes out fine. Okay, it is now the next day, and this is completely dry. And let's see what it looks like all together. I think that looks pretty good. Sorry about the wobbling. All right, so I have a couple of things I need to get done before my next convention, which is Anime 414 over in Milwaukee. Um, I'm gonna reorganize my prints and, um, <laughs> I'm not supposed to say prints, but, and then take out my display prints from the sleeves. My display prints kind of cause too much shine in any sort of lighting because they're in print sleeves and initially when I first started bending I was afraid of them getting damaged in any way, but if anything they've just kind of proven to cause more issues than even warrant having them in the sleeves. Um, a lot of people have to normally like maneuver funny be because the lighting always manages to bounce off of the sleeves and just makes it difficult to see the artwork inside. So I'm gonna do these two right now and once I get my next paycheck uh, I am going to order my new display which is a lot more stable. Thank you to Sundrop Studios for making like an amazing video going really in depth about their artist alley display setup. I've been wanting to switch from my backdrop that I use because she's kind of starting to break, can't lie, and I've been wanting something a lot more stable and compactable for when I start flying out to conventions, hopefully, fingers crossed. But yeah, I'm gonna do these two really quick, and we'll go from there. So what I mean by reorganize is I kind of have my prints in like a filing system. And originally, when I first started the system, everything was really nicely filed, but now things have just slowly gotten more and more scattered, so I'm going to make them nice and orderly again for both of these.
All right, I am going to be going to Marshall's. I'm gonna be looking for um, a bed sheet or a tablecloth that I can use for the setup. And then I'm also gonna be getting some other things that I just need for the apartment. So, yeah. Okay, I just got back from the store and this is going to act as my just gonna do this to compare the color. I think that looks pretty darn good if I do say so myself. And let's see with the entire logo. Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay, so it's been a couple of days and I still haven't gotten the other part of this package yet. It's been delayed twice now, um, but if it doesn't come in by tomorrow, I can get it fully refunded. And I might just go get a new storage solution after this, uh, just because most of the stuff I have stored right now is in a like, little crate. And I might see if I can get like a small suitcase to fit everything in. So yeah, let's open these up and see how big they are. So here is everything I purchased. There are quite a significant amount of these, four of these C-clamps, and then four of the like angly things that you put these in. I don't know how else to explain them. But yeah, I'm super looking forward to these. I'm also changing the way how I'm gonna be displaying my prints rather than using curtain hooks, I am using Velcro, just like how Sun Drop did in her video. So yeah, I'm really, really, really looking forward to this. I'm going to debut this at Anime 414, which I'm pretty sure this vlog is going to go up probably sometime just before I'm about to go to that. So yeah, if you're going to go to Anime 414, I'll put my location on screen right here. I'm really looking forward to it. I don't expect anything crazy just because it is its first year, but Hopefully I can get in while it's small. I'm gonna go measure these really quick and then I will take you on another trip to like Marshalls or TJ Maxx to find a good hard carrier for this. So, yeah. Ignore the fact that the suitcase is wet. It literally started downpouring on my way home. But I found a suitcase. Uh, it was pretty reasonably priced and I am going to put the new mounting system in there and also put everything I've got in here in there and hopefully all of this stuff too. So this is no longer just holding that. And then I can cram it in here. So yeah, uh, let's get to it.
okay, do not judge the wallpaper. He's there, he's thriving. But I am checking in to let you guys know I just submitted my print orders for Anime 414. That's probably gonna take a couple of days to get done since I think it's like well over a hundred prints probably. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna be cutting those on camera just because you guys have seen me doing that so much. But other than that, I think we're nearing the end of the video. So I'm sure there will be a couple more things that I'll check up on with you guys. But I'm really looking forward to debuting this new setup. And of course, I will vlog during Anime Forum 4 as well. So. All right, so I just finished another drawing actually in time for Anime Forum 4 and it's an Elden Ring drawing. Um, I'm really, really proud with how this turned out. If you zoom in, you can see literally everything is crosshatched and just very tediously done, but I'm super, super proud with how it turned out. Um, it's a play the Ronnie, obviously. So yeah, I just submitted the order form for that, and I'm gonna probably pick that up later today because it's a small one. And I did also get all of my prints that I have to cut. It's like over a hundred. Um, but like I said, I mean, you guys have seen me cut so many prints that it, I feel like it's a bit redundant. So I'm probably gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching this studio vlog. I really enjoy making these videos and they hold me accountable to getting my shit done before any convention or event I have to do. But yes, with that being said, my next conventions are Anime 4 and 4 and 2D Con in August. So if you see me there, please say hi. I'll put my placements up on screen right now for you to know where I am in case if you do happen to see me. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Next videos you'll see will probably be studio vlogs of said conventions. Make sure to stick around if you'd like. I don't post super consistently on the channel, but when I do, um, they're pretty long form content. And I'll typically post just like studio vlogs and artist alley vlogs. So yeah, have a great day and bye bye.